Today, we're going to be tasting three Pinot Noirs, the uh, Cherry Pie, California, AVA 2014, right here. Uh, we have a, a Bourgogne, uh, which is the sort of the lowest level of uh, Burgundy, but it's it's a state grown. It's it's uh, grown and bottled in the same same facility, um, O uh, Ciro, and uh, it's a 2018. And we have our Hillside Cuvée, which is our Sonoma Mount, our Sonoma Coast, sorry, uh, a blend uh, Sonoma Coast blend, and uh, you know one of our signature. Uh, uh, blended wines. But it's a blend of all Pinot Noir, right? Yes, it's 100% Pinot Noir, just a, a blend of different vineyards all on in the Sonoma Coast. They're, they're all within a few miles of each other. So um, unlike our first wine, which is a perfect segue, which is a, a blend of wines from three different, totally different appellations. Do you remember what they are? Yeah, um, they're Santa Barbara County, Sonoma County, and Monterey County. So the political boundaries as well. Yeah, so, um, and it's called Cherry Pie, and it's uh, um, somewhat of a misnomer because uh, the wine does not taste like cherry pie, but it's a very popular wine. It's very highly sought after, and uh, we thought it would be a good idea to to, pair, to compare these, these three. So um, again, the, the first wine we're tasting is, is a 2014 vintage and uh, it is a 14.5% alcohol. So it's Ooh. quite quite a, a stout a Pinot Noir, not, as, not as, uh, as big as others we've tasted, but certainly at the upper levels. And so let's begin by looking at the color of this wine. Again, it's a 2014. And we just bought it this week here in Sonoma County. So this is a current vintage. And, um, you know, right away, you can tell it's it's tawny. It's got- It's showing its age for sure. It, it's showing its age in, in, in the color. Uh, it's a little rust color. Uh, it is still red, it's still translucent. It is still classic Pinot Noir burgundy color. Um, just uh, oops, looks its age. Let's give it a, 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 a whiff. Ooh. That's potent. <laughs> this is potent. This is potent. This is, this is um, you know, the French have terms for this, uh, for, for this nose. Uh, they are sauvage or animal. It's a very, very feral nose. It's, it's wild. It's, uh, it's funky. And it's strong. Yeah. So and, strong that it, it kind of takes over everything else for me. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, it, I mean, it, you can smell it in the room. Um, now there are a lot of people who like this aroma. It's, it's a classic burgundy aroma. Um, this happens to be a very strong one and, uh, be interesting how it delivers on the palate. Well, I mean, you know, you still taste the, um, the animal, but it's not as strong as I would have expected. I think it's delicious. It's very uh, nice. Yeah. I think this is a, this is a beautiful wine. Um, if you can get over the, um, the, the promise of the nose, uh, it is, um, you know, rich fruit, right? You know, deep, dark cherries, um, uh, maybe, well, red cherries, I would say. Um, subtle earth tones. Uh, it's complex. It is. It is. Um, it has a really nice kind of bacon fat, like a singe fat flavor. Mm -hmm. Actually, when I was first smelling the wine, I thought it smelled burnt because of that. But um, on the palate, it's quite nice. It has a nice unctuousness. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a delicious wine. I, this is a great food wine. And speaking of that, you know, what would you pair it with? Uh, something with a lot of bacon. Yeah. Uh, Kokomon. <laughs> well, you know, or pulled pork. Or pulled uh, pork. Yeah. Probably. You know, or, um, even a BLT, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's great. It, it's, you know, it's $30. Perfectly accessible. So let's um, let's move on to the uh, Bourgogne. Um, again, uh, obviously a French wine, uh, and uh, one would expect it to be um, earthier than the California wines. Let's give it a. Uh, let's get, well, certainly not earthy in color. So compared to the previous the previous wine, uh, it is bright. It is beautiful. It is gem like. Um, More of a purpley red, but yeah, pur purpley red. You know, it's a little uh, a tint of haze in it. You know, it's not super crystal clear, um, but you know, nice color. Mm. Mm. Lovely nose. Mm -hmm. Fruit and herbs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is a French note um, 
called Garig, which is meant to be kind of a, an amalgamation of uh, all these different sagebrush that they have in Southern France. So things like lavender, sage, juniper. Um, and I get sage and lavender a lot mm -hmm. in this wine. Yeah, yeah, it's got those beautiful aromas of Provence mm. with, with a touch of cherry. I mean, how can you go wrong? That sounds wonderful, doesn't it? <laughs> Let's give it a taste. Hmm. So that solid fruit up front, mm -hmm. definitely a cherry. Um, good hit of fruit and the herbs, but it kind of drops off for me after that. Kind of disappears. Yeah. I mean, completely disappears. I mean, no, uh, all up front, nothing mid, very little finish, um, kind of thin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I get a little bit of the herbs on the finish. For me, you're right, the thinness. And I think the acidity is a little sharp now that I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going back to it. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it's not it's not a horrible wine. It's just uh, it it just kind of falls falls a little flat. Yeah. Um, definitely a pairing wine. Uh, what would you pair with this with? Something herbaceous. Uh, tabbouleh. Ah, perfect. I would enjoy this with tabbouleh for sure. This wine is twenty eight dollars. Uh, in case I forgot, the first wine, the the cherry tart wine, was um, thirty dollars. So let's move on to our hillside cuvee. A little bit pricier. This is a Sonoma Coast 2018. It's $55. Uh, it is 14.3% alcohol. And so I don't forget the, um, the Bur Bur uh, Bourgogne was, was uh, only a 13% alcohol, something you would expect from France, much lower in alcohol. So this one is 14.3, uh, kind of up toward the upper limits of the wines that we make. And let's give it a, um, a color look. Um, it is crystal. Yeah, clear, shockingly clear. Yeah, I can see my every line in my hand through it, and yet it has a beautiful ruby color, maybe garnet. Uh, it's it's a pretty wine. Mm. Hmm. Oh. See, it has that animal, but this this is balanced. Mm, yeah, so. <laughs> so it does hint at the at the the. the um, the nose of the cherry tart, which is very feral. It has those feral notes for sure. Uh, something that's classically French. Um, interesting, the, the, uh, the French wine did not have those notes, but um, it also balances with some, some fruit and it's a little, it's just a little bit more subtle. Yeah, lovely cranberry, um, mm -hmm. a little bit of white pepper. Um, mm -hmm. And I can smell um, that kind of chalky minerality mm -hmm. even without tasting it. Mm -hmm. Let's give it a taste. Mm. Surprisingly fruity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Really yeah. fills them out. Yeah. And bright fruit. Uh, definitely the cranberry comes through. I mean, it has those earthy tones that um, are, are delivered from the, from the, the nose, but uh, spice and... Yeah. White pepper, minerals, mm -hmm. um, really nice grippy wine without being um, over the top. Mm -hmm. So this wine, as I mentioned, is uh, $55, or if I didn't, it's $55, so a little bit more expensive. What would you pair this with? Uh, it would be great with any any kind of game. Um, when I'm pairing this at home, it's always uh, do a little salmon on the grill with mesquite wood, amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, here you go. Uh, hope you enjoy this and uh, do uh, subscribe and uh, thank you very much for joining us and uh, hope you uh, try some of these wines. See you all next time. Mm -hmm.